What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of The Narcissist Code. I'm your favorite self-aware narcissist, Mr. Lee Hammett, better known as Mental Healness across all social media platforms. This is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice. I'm a clinically diagnosed narcissist, and I use my platform on social media to raise awareness for NPD, get more people into therapy like myself, and also validate the victims, survivors, and the thrivers of said, to- to- said disorder, said toxic people, said toxic traits. Today's episode is going to be about but why narcissists want to be indispensable why they want to make it harder for you to get rid of them for make it harder for you to let them go and whatnot y'all so before we have today's episode y'all make sure that y'all subscribe to my uh, email list newsletter because my kids book is done and it will be released in the next coming days uh sneak peek to my sub- subscribers and to my newsletter link is in the description of every video and podcast that i do so thanks for you thank you for all that so yeah so yeah i just left therapy like this is me fresh in my, in my car from therapy because i had a you know i love getting therapy breakthroughs and whatnot and we my, my therapist pretty much helped me come to the consensus that in my mind i want to be indispensable and i think a lot of narcissistic people feel the same way they want to make it harder for you to get rid of them. Like we want to make it harder for you to get rid of us because we need to be validated. We need to have our experiences validated. We need to feel whole. We need to feel like you can't abandon us. We need to feel safe and secure because that's what indispensable means to a lot of narcissistic people, especially myself. You know, safety being indispensable means safety. It means security. It means that I'm going to be around you or around this situation for an extended period of time. Like it provides me this type of uh, this type of mindset of being in control and whatnot. Y'all. And these are fresh thoughts from therapy. Cause that's my that's my homework is to figure out what does indispensable mean to me because I want to be indispensable. Like I don't like a lot of narcissists do this, but not all of them. Everybody's gonna be different. Um, but me personally. I, it's hard for me to work with people, y'all. So it's hard for me to be, it's hard for me to give credit to other people. Um, I like to do things on my own. I like to build stuff on my, up on my own. That way nobody else can take credit for it. That way I'm not, I'm not dispensable. You see what I'm saying? I'm indispensable in that way, right? There. It's harder to get rid of me if I'm the creator, I'm the owner, I'm the CEO, I'm the leader. It's harder to get rid of me in that space right there because I have abandonment issues, y'all. I just do. I have a big, huge object fear of being abandoned. So if I had this fear of abandonment and it's just eating away at me, it's consistently eating away at me, then I'm going to make I'm going to make it harder for abandonment to happen. My inner child does not like being abandoned. My the adult version of me, yeah, I'm fine. I know people come and go out of people's lives or whatever. Everybody doesn't stay. But my inner child is just like, no, I don't want to be abandoned. We don't want to be abandoned. So if I, if I, as your inner child, do not want to be abandoned, then you need to feel the same way because we are one and the same. We are, we are together in this. You know, when I say we, I'm talking about the older version of myself and also my uh, inner child. So that's one thing we notice. Like I don't like people getting credit for what I've, for what I do, even if they were part of the journey. Like one of the main things that used to trigger me a lot, y'all, is when people used to give my wife credit for how far I've come in therapy. That used to be an immediate trigger for me. Or I, when I work, when I worked, um, because like this is my journey. I'm in therapy. I'm the one putting the work in, you know. But she's a part of it. But that would trigger me because I need to feel indispensable. I need to feel in control. I need to feel like y'all can't get rid of me because this is my journey. This is my story. I can do this story without her. You see what I'm saying? I don't want her getting credit for my journey, even though she is a part of it. That's crazy mindset. It's not crazy mindset. That's childish mindset. The inner child is in, 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 in my, when I'm thinking like that, my inner child is in control. I'm not in control. Like me, the adult version that you see in front of you, I'm not in control. My inner child is in control in that space, in that situation right there. So that happens quite a bit, y'all. That's why I just tell people, it, it, it is tough to have this type of mindset. It, it really just is, y'all. Because trying to work through it, trying to battle through it and things of that nature, it really does just eat away at you. Like, and she's like, yeah, you, you feel like you don't, it's not, you don't trust people to keep you around. 
if you help them succeed sometimes. And it happens, y'all. It happens in a lot of my friendships. Um, like even when I had a business a business relationship, business business partnership with my uh, guy I used to do real estate with, people, and I was literally the head of this team. Like, he didn't really do anything anyway. But people used to always be like, y'all are a great team. Y'all are killing it. And I'd be like, I, can, I, I did this without him. I can do this without him. And I proved it. And I, we're not we, we even we don't talk anymore because he did some most shady, grimy stuff. I might share I might share my story of dealing with a narcissistic friend um, sooner or later when I get to that point. Um, but that happens, y'all. It's just like he crossed the boundaries, and like people used to say, y'all work great together. Y'all are a great team. I, and I used to always take offense to that. We were a team, but it was my stuff. Like I don't like people taking credit for it because then I don't feel indispensable. Then I'm not in control. Then if it's not my, if I'm not in control, you can abandon me. You see that fear of abandonment? It, it, the fear of abandonment is like a damn disease that infects, infects, infects so many different aspects of narcissistic people's lives, y'all. This, this overall fear of abandonment, it really is a disease and it just, it, it, everything you touches is, you know, everything it touches gets infected. It gets, it gets infected by toxicity. It gets infected by a lot of different things. So I tell people all the time, narcissistic people are afraid of being abandoned. It's just one of those things. And they want to make themselves feel indispensable. They want to keep you around. They want to guarantee a space in a space to be around. So that's why you see sometimes narcissistic people like to move fast in your life. They like to become indispensable in your life really, really fast. They like to get you to fall in love with them really quickly. Sometimes y'all have babies really quickly. Sometimes you live together really quickly. Sometimes you buy cars and other things really quickly that tie you to this person. Now I'm indispensable. Now you have to deal with me. You see what I'm saying? Now you have to deal with me. You can't abandon me. You can't get rid of me now. You know, there's a control right there. So if I'm indispensable, then I cannot be abandoned. There's safety inside the mind of a narcissistic person that feels like you cannot abandon them. They feel like they're in control. They feel like they have the power. There's safety in that right there, y'all. So I, I try to convey that to a lot of people that the narcissistic person in your life, they probably want to feel indispensable in your life in some way, shape, or form. So think about this right here, y'all. Think about where you are in your relationship dynamic with a narcissistic person. And this doesn't have to be an intimate partner. This can be your parent. This could be your sibling. This could be your workplace. This could be your job. This could be so much other. This could be so many other things, y'all. This is not, it's not just one singular thing. This could be a plethora of things. So think about what, the, what, what in your life the narcissistic person has done in your life to feel indispensable. Put it in the comment section. If you made it this far, drop it in the comment section. If you feel, if you feel free enough to do it, if you feel a brave, not, not brave, I mean, the bravery plays a part in it, but if you feel safe, brave, whatever, adjective y'all want to use like drop it in the comment section drop what made that narcissistic per narcissistic person now that you think about it, when you have a child when you've had time to think about it drop it in the comment section of what they did to make themselves be indispensable in their life even if you left them even if you got rid of them even if you even if you broken up with them what did they do to make themselves indispensable in your life or what did they try to do did they try to have a kid with you really quickly? Did they try to get engaged or married to you really quickly? Did they try to live with you really quickly? What did they do in order to make themselves indispensable within your life? Ask yourself that question, y'all, because I feel like it can. I feel like that right there can help a lot of people heal. Understand that right. Like, understand that space right there, because narcissistic people, their abandonment issues damn near control their entire life. You know. Their abandonment issues, them, their control and run the entirety of their lives. That's just part you know, that, that is part. It is a big part of dealing with a narcissistic person, dealing with their abandonment issues, their fear of abandonment. They'll cheat on you so they can feel like they, they can be in control. Like they'll have kids with other people. Oh, they want to be indispensable in your life. So ask yourself that question. What have they done to be indispensable in your life? Because yeah, it can help you heal. It can help you set free. Set free. You're like, what have they, what have they done? How are they indispensable? Kids are the yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying kids are the easiest way for them to feel indispensable, but kids are the one of the quickest way. Like having kids with this person or getting like getting them involved in your life really, really quickly. That's one of the ways that they, they can feel indispensable very very quickly, y'all. Y'all look at me doing. I'm doing. My, I'm doing my therapy homework on camera because I feel like I need to document this. Because sometimes if you if I don't do it right now, I won't do it later. 
Like a lot of my stuff and a lot of stuff that ho is holding me back in my life right now is the fact that I need to feel indispensable in a lot of different things. So I need to re release control of certain things to help myself grow. Sometimes it's like, you know, sometimes when you hold onto a rope, there's an anchor on the bottom of it. It's anchoring you into this sea of toxicity, this sea, this sea of mediocrity, this sea of comfortability. It's, I have to get it uncomfortable. That's part of it, y'all. So a lot of narcissists, including myself, this video is pretty much about me, but it can be, you can, it can, it can be transposed on the other narcissistic people. Like they want to be, they want to feel ind indispensable because being indispensable makes them feel safe, makes them feel comfortable, makes them feel, you know, you can't get rid of me. Like it makes them feel like you're not going to abandon them. But the crazy thing about it is, it still won't be enough. They, sometimes they do more than one thing to make themselves indispensable in your life, but it still won't be enough for them to feel comfortable and safe in your life. It, it just it just doesn't work that way. I know I, I hate when I have to tell people like that. Like even if they do successfully get you pregnant, don't have kids with you, buy a house with you, or something, something like that, that might not be enough to make them not leave you. They can still leave you, but still feel indispensable in your life. So think about that. They can leave you for a new supply, new relationship partner, whatever. They can do that. But still be indispensable in your life because y'all got kids together. Y'all y'all live together. Y'all got y'all signed the lease together. You see what I'm saying? Y'all they can move out and you they, their name still will be on the lease. They can come back anytime they want to. Y'all got kids. You gotta deal with them. You gotta talk to me. You gotta deal with me. You gotta interact with me. I'm not indispensable anymore. So narcissistic people, I feel like the goal of a lot of narcissists is to feel indispensable, y'all. It just is. That's that's my thought process on it today, y'all. But um, uh, let me hop off this thing again. Make sure if you haven't already, subscribe to the newsletter. Um, it's right at the bottom of the screen. My new, I'm updating my website here pretty soon. So mentalhealness.net will be updated with all my stuff. It'll be, everything will be in one easy to find place, y'all, by October the 18th, 19th. Anyways, y'all, I'm super grateful for y'all. Oops. Like and subscribe for more. And as always, Mental Illness is out. Peace. If you haven't already, make sure you check out joining my newsletter, y'all, email list, so you don't miss out on any exciting updates I have coming up, y'all. The link is in the description of every video and podcast I do. Thank you so much.